A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, remind them to be under the control of magistrates and authorities, to be obedient, to be open to every good enterprise. They are to slander no one, to be peaceable, considerate, exercising all graciousness toward everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deluded, slaves to various desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful ourselves and hating one another. But when the kindness and generous love of our God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the bright paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Your faith has saved you. When our Lord works miracles, 
It's always the external sign of what happens, what the eyes perceive, but he's also inviting something else to happen, something greater within ourselves. And we see the evidence of that in today's gospel, at least with one of the 10 lepers. They all came to Jesus crying out to him, please cure us, cleanse us, we're impure, we're ostracized, we live on the edge, we're not part of the human family anymore. That's what the scourge of leprosy did in the ancient world. It was such a feared and horrible disease that as soon as you showed any type of skin ailment, you had to go to the priest and he would declare whether or not that person was fit to remain in the community. So even if you had a bad case of psoriasis or something else, which isn't leprosy and certainly not contagious, they would be excluded. They would have to live outside, oftentimes in colonies by themselves, but many of them were lepers. Leprosy was a horrible disease in the ancient world. And so they cry out to Jesus, make us clean. And Jesus works his miracle. But were they all really made clean? On the outside, yes. But were they really men of great faith? One of them certainly was. The one who returned to give thanks. The miracle that he received by his faith as a receptacle of that faith, and now enabled him to also be interiorly cleansed and purified as well. It moved him so much that he gave great glory and thanks to God. He returned to Jesus and fell at his feet. When we cry out to Jesus as well, we certainly have many needs in our families, workplaces, wherever. But are we also asking Jesus, along with those exterior things, to also increase our faith so that change is made within ourselves as well? And the more that that change happens, the more that we will want and be motivated to give thanks and glory to God as he works his wonders within us. On that day, 10 were made clean on the outside, but only one was also cleansed from within because he allowed the grace of God to work within him. And indeed it was his faith that saved him. Let our prayer today be to increase our faith so that the Lord and his penetrating love and healing may not only help us on the outside things of our lives, but even more importantly, what's within. In humble acknowledgement of our dependence on God for all things, let us gather our petitions and present them in prayer, that the faithful may grow in wisdom and grace as we seek new ways to share the light of God's love with those who are in the dark. Let us pray. That those in authority may learn the importance of gratitude and courtesy from the Christians around them. Let us pray that those who feel unloved or discriminated against may find the welcome for which they long within the Catholic Church community, let us pray. That this faith community may continue to be an example to others of loving generosity and courtesy to our neighbors, let us pray. We pray for those who have died Particularly in this Mass, let us remember the repose of the soul of Aaron Werner. 
that all that who have gone before us marked with that sign of faith may be happy forever in heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, hear the prayers of your children and grant all that we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 